Good morning, I'm Pastor Dave, and would you please join me in our confession of forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let's confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Please receive the absolution. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Would you please join me in our prayer of the day? Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation and birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel today is from Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will be led, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginnings of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Dave Kastner with Servants United Parish. So the temple in Jerusalem was a massive structure made of limestone blocks. Some of these blocks weighed well over 100 tons, the largest measuring 44.6 feet long, 11 feet wide what, high, 16 feet wide, and weighing uh, the largest, 567 to 628 tons. Now, while most were actually in the range of two and a half to three and a half by 15 feet, and approximately 28 tons. Now, how do you destroy a building made of giant stones so that, as Jesus said, not one stone be left upon another, all will be thrown down. Now remember, they didn't have heavy equipment, they didn't have explosives. So how do you destroy a giant structure like that, made of stone? Well, fire, of course. So as we know, fire will burn the wood, but what the Romans did, to destroy the temple, they set large fires at the base of the stone structure as well. Now, the heat from the fire would weaken the stone, and any moisture that was in the stone would turn to steam, expanding and breaking up the stone, and thus it all come falling down. You know, that's why when camping, you don't build a fire ring with rocks taken out of, a, out of a water source because even rocks can absorb water. And so if you use these rocks to build a fire ring, 
they're going to heat up. The steam and uh, the water inside is going to expand into steam, and the rocks can actually explode. So, what does this prophecy of Jesus have to do with the seemingly unrelated teaching of a false prophet? I believe it shows us that God is constant. Man can build great marvels of engineering, but they will not last. Just as man can teach false doctrine, but the truth of Christ will shine through. There always were and always will be many forms of false prophets. There are those who preach false doctrine and teachings about God and our Savior Jesus. You can find them anywhere, on TV, on street corners, even in our churches. Beyond the false prophets are the experts, I'm using my fingers for quote mark, quotation marks here, experts who try to disprove the existence of God. Like when science turns to theories, uh, these guesses, scientific guesses of evolution, or the Big Bang Theory, for example. Others teach that the Bible is proof of space aliens. Aliens, they say, are the reason for the technology behind the Bible, like building the temple in Jerusalem. They also say that, the, that Elijah's flaming chariot was, in reality, an alien spaceship taking him away. I consider myself a relatively open-minded person. And I enjoy listening to other intelligent thoughts on virtually any subject. Even when a false prophet starts presenting their evidence and artifacts to prove the theories, I'll listen to what they're saying. Unfortunately, many times their theories sound pretty ridiculous. There's even a minister that I would consider a false prophet. A man by the name of Barry Downing, a Presbyterian minister and author of the book, the Bible in Flying Saucers. He wrote in the book that Jesus was an extraterrestrial sent to earth to rid the world of sin and wickedness. And he cites uh, scriptures such as John chapter 8, verses 23, as proof that Jesus is from another world. Because in this, Jesus says, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Now, to support his claims, Downing also believes that Jesus left Earth in a flying saucer to another planet or perhaps another dimension instead of being resurrected. In the book, Downing claimed that angels from the Bible were actually angels that, the, that spoke to uh, Moses on Mount Sinai where he, in fact, boarded a UFO to receive the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were given to him. And according to Down Downing, on the Exodus in e out of Egypt, it was aliens guiding the ancient Israelites, providing them with the manna in the wilderness. Downing also claimed that the book, in his book, that a flying vehicle operated by aliens was responsible for the parting of the Red Sea. Now, I'm an advocate of education and do not believe that a person can be too educated. We all need to be open to new ideas and insights from any direction because we might actually learn something we might never have considered before. We learn a lot in church and Bible studies, but we also can learn just as much about ourselves and our faith when we encounter something we disagree with. Jesus saw quite clearly that enough people would try to twist and adulterate the Christian faith that he had to warn us. Why are false prophets so dangerous, you might ask? Too often, it's because of us, our ignorance, and our laziness in not educating ourselves in the scripture. When we don't even know the basics of our Bible, we are susceptible to some smooth-talking snake oil salesman with a pitch that makes us think that he knows what he's talking about. We need to always discern what we are told 
in red. And I encourage you to not even believe everything I, I say. How do you know that I'm not a false prophet? Well, I'll tell you. Listen to me with a discerning ear. Look to the scriptures to fact check everything I say. And decide for yourselves if you agree, disagree. Or maybe you might see a piece of scripture that I talk about from your own unique perspective. See, this is how not only do you root out a false prophet, but this is how you engage and grow in your own faith. So long as people exist, there will be problems. Because, folks, we have to admit it, we're all just flawed. But I believe we can virtually eliminate the danger of being led astray by a false prophet. This means we have to know what the scripture teaches us and seek the answers to questions we have in the word of God. Just as a marriage grows stronger through working through life struggles together, so does our faith grow as you struggle through your questions and your doubts. You may not always find the answers to your questions, but you will grow and strengthen your faith in the process. And that is true. Thank you so much for listening and God bless you.